Hey everyone, this is a follow-up video to what I did previously on using VCAR Pro, Pro with the uh, new inlay tool pads. And I'll attempt to uh, do the link thing here, and if I'm pointing at nothing, I didn't figure it out. I'll put it in the description below. Uh, I've used it quite a bit now, and with settings I recommended previously, I'm getting some really good results. And I want to show how that's going, and just some general tips and tricks along the way here. Just a couple of examples here, patterns I'm working on finishing up, uh, where you can see that the inlay itself is tight all around, everything's worked out great. The only problem with a couple of these is just some knots that were in the wood that I didn't account for that hopefully will differentiate when I put the oil on, separate those colors a little bit. But the inlay itself is a very tight fit and working out great. And I'm gonna give a, a better example. This is one I'm just finishing up for the first time that just started up with a clip art file that was in a package I had downloaded. I did a lot of work to clean it up and make it work better. What I wanted to show here, and I think it's showing up in the camera, is using the settings I detailed in my previous video, I've got pretty much perfect glue gaps. There's just a tiny little glue line here. This is, I ended up at uh, 120 thousandths on the uh, glue gap and 200 on the surface gap. And even with a, this is a massive inlay here, to start out with this entire thing as one. And I've got pretty much perfect glue lines down at the bottom. On something this big, a huge part of being able to do it successfully is to have a hydraulic press. I found a used one and it's working out fantastic to quickly put an even clamping force all over the place. One thing I've already mostly cleaned up that I'm gonna change is if you're doing an inlay inside a previous inlay, uh, you get down to the glue layer and I have a 30% step over on the tapered ball nose, which leaves a little bit of a gummy material with the glue down there and takes a little bit more cleaning out. So I think I'm gonna go back to a 20% step over and try it which will increase machine time. But if it takes five minutes longer to machine and I save five minutes or more of me sitting here picking away at things, trying to get it clean, it'll be a net win. I'm planning to do a full video on this particular board just to cover the, the basics uh, all the way through, including with the uh, file, separating out different layers, getting things. If you want to machine these parts at a time, everything is course separated onto different layers to get it into different files. And step-by-step step, I've gone through and cut out one type of wood at a time. This white oak probably blends on the camera pretty much by hopeful, I believe, and I'm hopeful that when I put the oil on it, it's gonna pop out and differentiate itself. Kind of blends with this cherry right now, but in this one I've got walnut, cherry, hard maple, white oak, walnut details, uh, purple heart, paduke, and then the last step will be the centers will cut out and there'll be yellow heart for the center of these flowers. So there's some steps that can lead to efficiencies in both creating the layers and the different files and then cutting things in the plug and if you have things spread out randomly and getting them consolidated to use less material. I'll cover things thoroughly in that one just to add a couple of tips here. With these two different materials, in order to be able to glue them in at the same time, I, I stuck them down and I surfaced them at the same time so that they're the exact same thickness so that I can press these in at the same time. I'll have to, I'll have to trim carefully around here. Uh, on the extra plug material just to get them fit together. But if I hadn't surfaced these to the same thickness, I would have to glue this one in, clamp it, wait till the next day, and then surface that off and glue this one in, clamp it, it adds an extra day. And the, the gluing time is one of the major uh, time increases on this kind of multi-step project. So I'm gonna try to cut that down here. I broke this one up also. This is too big as far as the plug goes to me to try to cut this, to cut, just to glue up a blank for a plug and then cut it all into one and then try to get glue in here with the working time of the glue and do this entire thing at once. So I, I broke it into thirds and it's pretty much a perfect matchup, but there are cut lines through actually right there. I know where to look, otherwise I don't think you'd ever find it. So I did this one and then the last third machined out at the same time. And then I could glue up smaller plug blanks for each one and then put them in at the same time, press them in. And then I came back and machined out the center and then put that plug in. So it requires a little bit of overlap. After this one was already in here, I modified the file for the center one to come back and overlap just a tiny bit into the what would now be walnut. So I'd get a, a clean match up there. And one more thing I'm gonna show while I have this here. When I have this in an inlay this big, I'm concerned about uh, where the glue is gonna go if you have too much. So this one, I, I thought of the solution too late. I went back and manually drilled holes, marked where I was gonna have other materials drilled holes such as these, these are just glue relief. And when the uh, centers go in, they'll disappear. 
And so you can see in this uh, file for the other board I had there with the mountains, these are places where the, the snow is gonna go in. And so when I got this coated with glue and you press it down, if you've got excess, there's no way it's gonna come all the way out and get squeezed out the edges like a smaller one. Too much glue in here, it's just gonna come up and out, no problem. Too much glue in here, you're gonna have possible problems with the way it seats in there. And I'll take and drill these through before I press this in. I just, with my current clamping setup, and I wanna drill all the way through. Unfortunately, while manually marking this one up here, I screwed up and put one hole where it shouldn't have been. So I'll have to come back and machine this out and then create a plug. The primary green direction on the cherry is running across here. So I'll put a small shape there and I'll put the opposite here and attempt to line up about the right angle there and just attempt to put it in the same spot. So it'll, it'll glue in and line up pretty good. Fixable, just a little extra pain in the rear. What we can see that here though is how this did its job. There's a, a cylinder of glue in here. And of course this was taller before I machined it off. And I don't know if it made it all the way up but the excess glue went where it was supposed to in all these spots that ended up being machined out later. If someone wants to try that, just need to add a layer of wax paper. When I've got this pressed in here and I've got glue that's gonna come out, I don't wanna have a block of wood on here as part of my pressing operation that's gonna get glued to that squeeze out. So I'll need to add wax paper on top in between so that I don't end up sticking things together. Since I have this perfect example sitting here, something I think I talked about a little bit in the first video, um, not sure if I left it in as I clipped it together. When you've got these tiny little inlays, okay, you can see how narrow that is. The plug portion is going to get cut nearly perfectly as far as the level of it. They get cut all the way around. So as tiny as this little point is here, it's full depth on the inlay all the way around. What can happen on the inlay portion when you've got something that's very tiny is at the full depth here, this bit has a certain width. And as it approaches the end where it's tapering off, it can get to where the bit at that depth is too wide so it has to rise up in order to make that point. And any sharp corner is gonna be that way. So as the bit comes out to the end, it has to rise up a little bit, which means that we're not quite full depth at the very tip. And I can't say for sure that will cause you any problems, but just something to keep an eye on. What I've been doing is just taking a little bit off the very small tips, just to make sure that they don't bottom out while I'm looking to get the rest of it seated completely. The wood drain soft enough, it's probably just gonna smash it in there. But with a quarter inch depth, on the inlay. You're not gonna notice in any way that there's a tip missing. This is far below the surface and it goes in. So just an extra step I've been doing just to make sure on certain shapes that I get everything seated fully. So that's it for this follow-up. I just, since I claimed in the first one that I had this uh, tool path working and I've used it a lot since then, I wanted to just reiterate that it's still working for me. If you have a different bit than this particular one that I'm using, I'll put a link in the description with a different angle or a slightly different tip width then the settings might need to be modified a little bit. But with this particular bit and the particular settings that I came up with previously, I'm getting what I would term to be perfect results on here. I have no gaps anywhere with all these uh, different steps I've done going back and forth and, and everything's matched up perfectly. So I really can't wait to get these glued in. I wanted to make the video uh, before I did that so I could show some of the things within the, the pocket and on the plug itself. But I'm, I'm close to done with this one and really looking forward to see how the colors pop and out the, the flower centers. It of course won't stay that way with those colors. They're all gonna uh, become more muted, but hopefully they, they stay differentiated from each other, even as the board ages a little bit. Love it if you give the video a like, if you uh, got something out of it and like the process of seeing this, and I'm hoping to go into more depth on this particular one and some others that I'm working on. If you've got a, another method that's working for you or a suggestion on how to improve things, uh, please leave it in a comment and we can discuss it. And otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.